purpose of tongues that day was a sign to all of the unbelievers to confirm that this was the true work of the Holy Spirit. Because people were talking in, as we saw last week, different languages that they had not previously learned. So no one could deny that this was God's doing. This was the Holy Spirit doing this. This was not man conjuring up something on his own. This was God at work. Everybody in that upper room were already saved. I want to establish that fact. They weren't getting saved on that day. <laughs> when they were in that upper room waiting on the Holy Spirit to come, they were already saved. Amen. Somebody say already saved. Amen. That's right. Saved before they even started to speak in tongues. Because tongues have nothing to do with salvation or conversion. I did not study Amen. to the Pentecostals and Apostolics who might see this or hear this. Tongues have nothing to do with salvation Amen. or conversion. Amen. Nothing. And I'm going to go a little bit further and I'm not trying to meddle with nobody. I just have to tell the truth. Amen. The truth must be told. I'm not going to tiptoe around and, and be careful of who they may get offended. The truth is the truth. Amen. And if you're in error or falsehood, you're going to get offended. Amen. And you must come into the truth. Amen. Anyone that teaches you're not saved until you speak in tongues is teaching another gospel. Amen. It's not the gospel of the Bible. That is false doctrine. Now, folk can get mad at that if they want to, but I do not care. Because people need to be saved, and people's eternal destiny is at stake when they don't believe what is right, when they don't believe what is true. You cannot go around Forcing and making people feel like they they they're nothing or haven't arrived. Because have you spoken to them yet? That's none of your business. Amen. What are you asking that question for? What does that have to do with anything? Not. Nothing. Amen. Not salvation. Amen. So we want to make that clear. Speaking in tongues has nothing to do with salvation. And you are saved by grace through faith in the finished work of the cross. Amen. If you never speak in tongues. Can you handle the truth? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'll go a little further. This might offend some people, but I've already offended people in the last two installments, so I may as well keep on going. Right. <laughs> any denomination, any organization that teaches you must speak in tongues to be saved. Oh, this is this 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 might this may this gonna knock some people out. Whoever's teaching that to people and people that believe that I'm going to say it they may not even be saved themselves Amen. oh boy that's it I, 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 they're coming with the stones now that's how serious this is why? because you're not believing the true gospel and the true way to be saved. Amen. People who believe another way to be saved, that they're in a dangerous place. See, and understand me, if the Bible says this 
is how you get saved. But you say, yeah, okay, but. See, as soon as you say but, you talk about something else. <laughs> oh, we can't add to the scripture. We already told you not to do that in Revelation. You, you can't take away. It is what it is. Amen. God made this thing simple and he made it easy. That's right. By grace, through faith, Amen. belief in Jesus, and in Jesus alone. Amen. Conversion comes that way. Amen. Not by, and I'll go back to the last week a little bit, not by going into a tarry room and tarrying for the Holy Ghost. No, that is error. Amen. Amen. And I'm not, I'm not, you know, it's, it's, me talking about this is not throwing punches at somebody. That ain't, that's not even what it's about. Amen. That's not what it's about. I've got to preach and teach truth. Amen. It's got to come from this pulpit. Truth. Not feel good stuff. Amen. Not make up stuff. And not what some organization or denomination teaches. We have to be Bible. Bible believing Christians. Amen. Amen. So salvation is by grace through Jesus. Faith in Jesus. Somebody say alone. alone. It doesn't take anything else. Amen. There should never be an emphasis on speaking in tongues over repentance, over faith in Jesus alone, over the gospel message of the cross. Because that is what brings a person to salvation, conversion to the heart of the believer. It's what Jesus did on the cross. If it was another way to be saved other than him going to the cross, which there wasn't, why go to the cross? Why go through that horrible death? Why come, matter of fact, why inconvenience yourself as God? Come down here and become a man by us? And you're God? Why go through all of that? Live 33 years on this wicked planet full of sin. Dealing with people. Three years in ministry. To suffer, bleed, and die a horrible death on the cross. Right. When you can just say, I'll just send the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost or any other day. And make people speak in tongues. And that, that's the way I'm on I'm I'm people going to get saved. He could have done that. Amen. But the Lord did. Amen. He came to give himself a ransom. The Lamb of God which taketh away the sin. See, sin had to be dealt with. Yes. Eradicated. Yes. And it took somebody to die yes. in the place of you and I. Because we couldn't die for ourselves. Because you die for yourself, you'd be dying in your sin. Right. So you dying for you means nothing. It had to be somebody, a perfect sacrifice, to die on your behalf, to stand in your place, to do for you what you could not do for on your own. Amen. And Jesus qualified to do that. Because he lived a perfect, sinless life. So he was the only one that could sacrifice himself. God took care of this business by himself. So for somebody to come and say, yeah, the cross is all right. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> the cross is everything. Amen. The cross is all right, but, but we got to go. We got to go work. We got to work. Come on, sweat, work. Say it. Say it faster. Say it faster. <laughs> you working? 
and you're manufacturing it on your own. Nobody was in the upper room talking about some say it faster. Amen. And, and coaching them along and telling them what to say. Because as I made it clear last week, they didn't know how the Holy Spirit was coming. Right. They didn't know they were going to speak in tongues. Right. So we have to get this thing straight. Amen. We've got to tell it like it is. Amen. The emphasis should always be on Jesus. Amen. And, and on what he accomplished on the cross. Jesus' death emphasized and his resurrection emphasized. He died and he rose on the third day. That's what a person has to believe and trust that the finished work of the cross is going to save them. Trusting in Jesus. Jesus, I accept it. I believe that. I believe you died for me. I believe that pays for my sin. I believe that I've been forgiven because of what you did at Calvary. And I'm placing my total trust in you Amen. to save my soul. Amen. That's what it takes. Amen. Not adding other stuff to this. No other requirements. Because then you are preaching, teaching another. That comes from somewhere else. Right. Not from the book. That's another gospel. Right. Amen. Amen. Without Jesus, there is no salvation. Amen. For anybody. Right. We needed him. Yeah. And what he did on our behalf. Amen. So everything must be put in its proper order. Proper place. And at the church in Corinth, Paul was setting things in order when it came to the operation of spiritual gifts in a church gathering. This is what we see in Corinth, chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 14, goes on to talk about this more in detail. In a church setting, in a church service, there must be order. Amen. Not debacle and chaos. You cannot just have chaos in a church service. And in some churches, people will blame their disorder on the move of the Holy Spirit. They lie on the Holy Spirit while all along they are in the flesh. Order. They want to come off as being so spiritual and anointed before the congregation. Right. Showtime at the Apollo. Right. No. Showtime at the church. No. It's not about you showing off. Amen. God is to be elevated. He is. Amen. on the platform. He is to be looked to. Amen. You see, whatever you do should be to bless and edify to build up someone else in the assembly. Did you hear what I said? Not building up yourself. Building up someone else. It's not about you being seen. It's not about you being heard to be praised by others. The church service is not about impressing one another with our gifts Amen. or competing with one another to see who did it best. Right. Amen. That's not what it's about. Yes, and in Corinth, they were cutting up. <laughs> That's why Paul was dealing with this type of stuff. They were so out of order. Everybody trying to speak in tongues. Everybody trying to interpret things. Everybody trying to prophesy. Everybody got a song. Everybody, I mean, just, just, you know, a free for all. 
and blaming it on the Holy Ghost? Absolutely not. The Holy Spirit doesn't does not grant us gifts for us to look big and powerful to everybody. Amen. To act proud and arrogant when God uses us. The gifts are not given to draw people, here we go, to ourselves. When God uses us. It's to draw others to him. It's about drawing others to him. Somebody say, drawing others to him. You see, whenever I get through preaching and teaching, God should look bigger to you now. God should look greater to you now. Not me. I, I shouldn't look greater and bigger. God should be looking bigger and greater after I get done. Amen. God is to be impressed upon you more when I'm done. Not myself. Because this is God's thing. It's all about God. All about him. And no one should be trying to steal his glory. Because yes. he already said he's not going to share his glory with no one. Right. So verse 28 of the text, it names more gifts and callings in ministry. More of them in the church. And all of this for, is for the edifying of the body and unity. The edifying of the body and unity. We'll look at it again. I'll read it again. It was already read in your hearing, but we'll look at it again. Now, you, verse 27, now you are the body of Christ. Talking about the members. And members individually. And God has appointed these in the church. Notice, God has appointed these gifts, these ministries, these talents, these ministries in the church. They're God appointed. And he says, first, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, after that, miracles, then gifts of healing. And he says, helps. There it is, helps. I was talking about that uh, in another installment. The gift of health. No one wants that one. Hell. Well, they don't want help. And they think that's a, you know, that ain't, no, no, no. Give me one of them bigger gifts. They, they, I want to look, I want to look big and, and, and beautiful. And, and I want I want I want to impress. Helping ain't impressing nothing. The helping is in the background. But the gift of health is very important. Okay. It's much needed. Yeah. Amen. And even though it doesn't look big to people, it's big to God. Amen. Amen. He names administration. That's a gift. That's like steering a ship. Various uh, varieties of tongues. So there's a variety of tongues. All, all, and then he goes with those questions. Are all apostles? Answer, no. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracles? No. Do all have gifts of healing? No. We have to be truthful about this. But some organizations will tell you that, hey, you ought to be doing all this stuff. Like, you can just do it on your own. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is the one that gives us these gifts. Amen. And works through us. Amen. We can't put this upon ourselves. Uh -huh. uh, I, I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm going to get ready to operate in the, 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 the gift of healing. <laughs> I'm going in there and everybody getting up. Um, oh, go, go try. Go do it right now. Since you're so big and powerful. See, you, you can't do what you want to do in your own power. 
in your own self. God is the one that infuses us and empowers us and energizes us in these workings, in these giftings. Amen. Come from God. Are all workers of miracles, he said. Answer, no. Do all have gifts of healing? No. Do all speak with tongues? No. Every believer doesn't. No. Amen. Amen. Now I know there are those who say the opposite, but they are wrong. Amen. They are wrong. Some of you in here have placed your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. And you're saved, and you've never spoken tongue yet. Amen. You're not second class to those who have. Amen. You're not supposed to be made to feel like, well, you, you, you need a little more. You, you, you ain't quite there yet. You, 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 oh, you lacking something. Oh, that's why you, you, you ain't got no power. You, you need some power. See, people will tell you all of these things to get you to speak in tongues. And, it's, and see, it's, it, the emphasis is always on tongues. They want to hear you say something. They want to see it. They got to hear it. To them, that's the evidence. Oh, they got saved today. No, I was saved last year. If a person happens to speak in tongues later, you were saved before that. You don't get to speak in tongues and not be saved. You, you're saved first. <laughs> See, it doesn't, that, the argument doesn't even make sense. <laughs> we got to bring some order, some understanding to this. He says, do all interpret? Well, no. The answer to that. But we're going to look at something a little bit later in chapter 14 when we're dealing with these tongues. We're not through with the tongues yet. Because it's more. He talks a lot about tongues because these folk was acting out, just acting out. And tongues, tongues has always been some big issue. Amen. Always. It all is always way back here. That's not just today a big issue. It, it was a big issue back then, and they were out of order and had a lack of understanding about the tongue. Do all interpret. But verse 20, verse 31. But earnestly desire the best gifts. See? Desire the, the best gifts. Nothing wrong with desire the best gifts. And yet I will show you a more excellent way. Now he goes into something else in chapter 13, which I won't deal with that because I don't want to be prolonged in this. But he Starts talking about love. Love. Yes. See, if you're going to do anything, you need to be doing it in love. Amen. With an attitude of love. Because, see, you can work all of the gifts, which he names things as he talks about that. You can do all of these things. If, you, if you're doing this and doing that and doing that and you're doing that and doing that, and uh, you mean as a junkyard dog. <laughs> and you hate people. You need to sit down. <laughs> what what is that doing? Sounding brass, a tinkling, clanging cymbal. You are nothing. No, no. All of these things are balanced and rooted in love when you are being used of God. It's in love. When I preach the truth, that's because I love people. Amen. Now, folk that get convicted, 
may walk up out here and think I'm meddling with him or uh, he always meddling. He, he, he mean, he, 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 you know, he, he hate. He, no, I'm not being a hater. Amen. I'm being a lover. Amen. Let's just love you into the truth. Amen. But I have to tell it. <laughs> yeah, I know you're telling the truth, Pastor, but it, it's just the way you stand. <laughs> what? The way, it, if you just kind of, if you blew kisses and <laughs> stop fornicating. <laughs> don't, don't fornicate. God loves you. What good is that going to do? I got to say, flee fornication. Amen. You know, it's, it's got to hit you. <laughs> it, it, it's got to convict you. It's got to find you where you live. Because if I'm blowing kisses and being all of these niceties, <laughs> I know you. I know you a drunkard, but it, it, that don't matter. I love you. So what you got to do so I be drunk last night? You're loved by God. That's just a, that's just a bad habit. Don't worry about that. You're, you're, you're all right. Maybe God will get, take that away from you one day, but don't worry about that. You liar, you. Amen. Amen. No, uh-uh. I got to say, be not drunk with wine, Amen. but be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Again. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to love you Amen. and tell you the truth. Amen. Why? Because the scripture says drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Right. Now, is that hating you? Let's try to help you and warn you. Amen. Lest your soul be condemned to hell. Amen. A person cannot continue to live a lifestyle of sin. Amen. Amen. In other words, this can't be your daily routine. Amen. We know people fall, people make mistakes and, and mess up in sin. But to just live in it. I know I ain't perfect, but go well. Wrong attitude. No, no. We should be trying to change. Let the Holy Spirit change us. Amen. Let him work in us. Amen. Cleanse us. Grow us. Develop us. Move us out of that place of complacency. Amen. Where we've gotten comfortable. I know I'm wrong, but I, I, I'm, I, I do go to church every week. <laughs> That's not going to save you. And some people think that. Going to church saves you. No. You should go to church. Let's throw that in there before somebody. That said, I ain't got to go to church to be saved. Stop it. Stop it. And that's not what I'm saying. Amen. Because then I have to bring in the scripture in Hebrews. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. So he says, yeah, go to, to go to church. Right. Don't neglect going to the house of God. That's what he yeah. said. No, but it, it's not about that. It, you, you have to. See, we got to live this life. Yeah. We've got to live it. Yeah. And God has given us the power yeah. through his spirit yeah. to pull this thing off. Yeah. We got the power. And we say, hey, we can do it. Amen. I can't help myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let the Holy Spirit have his way. Let him work in you. Submit, surrender to him. And say, yes, Lord, your will be done in my life. I'm going to die to myself and my fleshly desire. Oh. And I'm going to give it to you. Amen. Wash me. Cleanse me. Make me whole. Amen. I want to live for you. 
I want to be a good representative for the kingdom. A godly example. That when people look at me, they see what a kingdom man, a kingdom woman looks like. Because I'm serving you wholeheartedly. Not compromising. And let your spirit live through me. See, if you're saved, you have the power already. You don't have to beg God for power. You already have it. Just activate it. It's there. Hallelujah. I got to move on. Paul, he names first apostles. Apostles first in that list. Notice, apostles. So, what are the qualifications? And I won't, I, I'll have to, I'll deal with this more next time. But I'm just going to kind of tap into it today. What are the qualifications for an apostle? Because we have many people today who want to take on that title, apostle. Boy, they, they're coming out of the woodwork. They would turn around somebody that so-called graduated <coughs> to an apostle. You, you've been an elder for the last 20 years. When did you become an apostle? Oh, next time I, I see you and I heard you, you got an apostle tied to your name. You were an elder. You were a minister. You were uh, even bishop so-and-so. Oh, they're not, they're not the bishop no more. They're apostle. Oh, yeah. Don't tell me that. Do not tell me that. <laughs> and I see that's going to that's gonna knock some people out of, off of their rocker right there. Yeah. Folks don't want to hear that. But I've got to tell the truth. Amen. I, I'm not going to buy into this Pentecostal charismatic, woo, we can do anything we want to do out of order and just claim this on ourselves when it's not true. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to stick with the book. Now, in case some people may be watching this by video or hearing this CD, uh, they may be thinking, oh, I, I don't, I'm turning him off. But my pastor, he is, gonna, he is an apostle. Uh, no, he's not. <laughs> According to the Bible, no, he's not. Ooh, -wee, I'm very unpopular now with some folk. But that's all right. I can take that. I'm fine. I love it. Because I'm about the truth. The qualifications of an apostle. What's the first thing? To have seen Jesus. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Amen. I, I don't mean to meddle with you, but I just got to try to help you wow. if you're watching this on YouTube. Have your pastor seen Jesus? <laughs> Has that apostle you're talking about seen Jesus? Answer, no. <laughs> Calm down. Don't let the steam come, don't let the steam come out of your ears. See, people will get mad at this type of stuff when the, the truth comes out. Yeah. No. No. Uh-uh. Let, 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 let's make this clear. To have seen Jesus. Watch this. To have witnessed the resurrection. Right. Another qualification. If you a witness to the resurrection, you over 2,000 years old. That, that's the beginning, you should be in the Guinness Book of World Records. 2,000 years old. That might be the oldest person that's ever lived. Wow, you are a marvel. Because you were at the resurrection. 
Uh, get mad at women if you want to. To have witnessed the resurrection. Qualification. Wow. And they still talking about apostles so and so. See, we can't buy into foolishness. Amen. I'm sorry. It's just, just the way it is. Have been with Jesus, witnessed the resurrection, walked with him during his three-year ministry, sitting under his teachings, seeing his miracle signs and wonders. All of these things. Mm -hmm. And no one today can make claim to that. Amen. No one can make claim to that. Oh, Lord help us. Yes, so there are no apostles like the 12 apostles. I've even heard people boast with their proud self saying, uh, I'm on the same level as the Old Testament, the, the, uh, as the prophets in the Bible. And then they'll say that about prophets too. I'm on the same level as Elijah. Shall you call down fire from heaven? Do it. Elijah did. Go, go, raise, go raise the dead, the dead woman's son. Elijah did. He called down fire. <laughs> and it happened. On 50 men, by the way, <laughs> who were coming to get him. He said, if I be a man of God, let fire fall from heaven and consume you and your 50 men. Whoop! <laughs> God did it. They came back again with 50 more. <laughs> we're going to go rest him. If I be a man of God, let fire come down and consume you and your 50 men. What? Can you do that? See, 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 we getting serious now. No. So, the prophets and the apostles, I'll get more on that next time. Apostles and prophets. There are none like those in the Bible. Amen. Amen. They do not exist. Oh, he wrong for that. No. I'm, I'm in the Bible. Amen. They do not exist. Amen. Prophet so and so. See, and they even put it, you know, they, they gotta make you gotta make sure you call them prophet. Yeah. Don't don't just say John Doe. Prophet John Doe. They gonna make sure you put prophet on that. A prophet tense. Because they wanna be known by that. They wanna be blown up. It's about them, apostle, title, label. Well, there are none like those that were in the Bible. Not today. So none of the apostles, none of the prophets of today are on the same level as those in the Bible. Now the thing about the apostle, the gift of apostle, and that's being named here, and prophet, those first two, Understand this. Those were the foundation gifts. The foundational gifts. How the church began. See? God had to establish the church. The early church. So then the apostles were needed. Prophets were still needed at that time like the ones in the Bible. But guess what? 
the foundation has already been laid now. Those are foundational gifts. So people who walk around with those titles, they just have the title. <laughs> they just have the title. That's all. Amen. Because Jesus gave the apostles the power to do miracle signs and wonders. And there were qualifications. Qualifications. When Judas hung himself, there was a void there. But they had to fill that void. They had to name and take on another apostle in his place. And when the disciples gathered together to decide upon who would take his place, who gonna be number 12 now? There were qualifications that had to be met in order to be an apostle. Amen. You can't just go pick anybody. There's gotta be some qualifications. They give those qualifications in Acts chapter one, verse 21. Therefore of these men who have accompanied us, they're talking, they're, they're discussing this. The time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among, uh, among us, beginning from the baptism of John to that day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. Qualification. He would have to walk with us and witness the resurrection if we're going to replace Judas. And they proposed two. So they're picking from two people. Joseph called uh, Barsabas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, O Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which of these two you have chosen to take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell that he might go to his own place. So they're replacing Judas. And they cast their lots. This is a way to determine God's will back then. Before the Holy Spirit came, they did this in the Old Testament. And the lots fell on Matthias. And he was numbered with the 11 apostles. How you gonna get past that? Qualification, right there. So, with that thing, and pretty much proven, there are no more apostles Amen. like the 12. No more prophets like those in the Bible. Right. They're not to be found. So don't fall for the apostles' title and the prophets' titles. Because the way people are claiming these things, because they're everywhere. Apostles, prophets, everywhere. Baruch, the prophets are coming, the prophets are coming, the prophets, they all, you can see them all on YouTube, prophesying foolish stuff, crazy stuff, and what's this, watch it, thousands, not a couple hundred, not fifty, thousands are following them, and protecting them, and believing in them. And they prophesy and proper line and proper line and none of this is coming true. <laughs> Are they of God? So God gets it wrong, huh? God, how, how many times God gonna be wrong? But I don't know if we can believe the Bible then. If, if he's getting it wrong like that. <laughs> with these so-called prophets. 
See, you, you gotta have some discernment. Yeah. It goes back to discernment. Yeah. You must have some discernment these days. Like I said last time, when you follow these things and believe in people like this, you get what they get. Let me make that clear. You get what they get. Stop with this. Can we all just get along in unity? No, not that. That don't work. When people are outside of the Bible. No, no, we have to agree on the central foundational truth of Christianity. That's important. I'm not talking about secondary issues. I'm talking about the, the truths that build Christianity. We must agree on those. Death, burial, resurrection, the name one of Jesus. You have to believe it. Because if you don't, you're in another camp. Amen. So, I'll end with this. There are no more <laughs> apostles. Uh, no more prophets like these in the Bible. None. We'll go deeper next time. God, praise in the house.